Good day everyone! My name is Loreto Atamosa and welcome to Module 3, Lesson 3. In this lesson, you will enjoy learning about the definition of control, characteristic of control, scopes of managerial control, process of controlling, and the link between planning and controlling. So our learning objectives for this video discussion are the following. First is to discuss the nature of organization, and second is to define the organizational theories and their application. And so, let's start. According to Kuntz and O'Donnell, the managerial function of control is the measurement and correction of the performance of subordinates in order to make sure that enterprise objectives and the plans devised to attain them are accomplished. According to Henry Fayol, control consists of verifying whether everything occurs in conformity with the plan adopted, the instructions issued, and principles established. It has an objective to point out weakness and errors in order to rectify and prevent recurrence. It operates on everything, things, people, and actions. Now, control is a fundamental managerial function. It is the process of regulating organizational activities so that actual performance conforms to expected organizational standards and goals and ensures that necessary corrective action is taken. Now, there are different concepts of control which are used in different contexts. First, we have executive function. Second, we have intimately connected with planning. And lastly, process which guides activity towards some predetermined goals. Now, in managerial terminology, control is ensuring work accomplishment according to plan. So, it is a process of ensuring activities are producing desired results. In short, Control is an executive function involving three elements, such as, such as standards, evaluative, and corrective action. And there are some important definitions of control that we need to highlight. The words of Dalton E. McFarland, control in its managerial sense can be defined as the presence in a business of that force which guides to a predetermined objective by means of predetermined policies. For Kuntz and O'Donnell, controlling is a measuring and correcting the activities of subordinates. It ensures that events conform to plans. For EFL Breach says, control is the process of checking actual performance against standards or plans with a view to ensuring adequate progress and satisfactory performance. For Henry Fayol, Control consists in verifying whether everything occurs in conformity with the plans adopted, so the instructions issued and principles established. It has for object to point out weaknesses and errors in order to rectify them and prevent recurrence. Now let's proceed with characteristic of control. So control is a basic managerial function for every manager and responsibility of line authority. So from the definitions given, the following characteristics has been extracted, and these are the following. First, continuing and never-ending activity. And so control is a continuing and never-ending activity. It involves constant analysis of objectives, policies, procedures, positions, performance standards, and etc. It starts from planning and continues till so long the enterprise survives. So, control is measurement and correction of performance of activities of subordinates in order to ensure that enterprise objectives and plans devised to attain them are being properly accomplished. So, control function should be exercised regularly. Second, we have exercise at all levels. Therefore, control is exercised at all levels of management. Example, top level, middle level, and bottom level management. Third, we have forward-looking. So control is a forward-looking activity and not a past activity. So control initiates remedial measurements to minimize the mistakes that had happened in the past. Fourth, we have dynamic process. So control is a dynamic process. It is flexible and not rigid. So control results in corrective actions, which may lead to change in the performance of other function of management. Since management is handing a business entity which keeps on changing, managerial control is also dynamic. Management will be failing in its duty if its approach is not dynamic. 
Fifth, we have corrective action. So the purpose of control is achieved only when corrective action is taken on the basis of feedback information. So it is an action which adjusts performance to predetermined standards whether deviations occur. So a good system of control facilitates timely action so that there is minimum waste of money, time, and energy. Next, we have control is people-oriented. So the approach to managerial control is people-oriented. Control is attained through people and not through things. So it is people who exercise control. And lastly, controlling is related with planning. So planning and controlling are two inseparable functions of management. Without planning, controlling is a meaningless exercise and without controlling, planning is useless. So planning presupposes controlling and controlling succeeds planning. Now let's proceed with scopes of managerial control. So the scopes of managerial control are very wide. A well-designed plan of managerial control includes all management activities. According to Holden, Fish, and Smith, the main scope of control are the following. First, control over policies. So the success of any business organization to a large extent depends on how far its policies are implemented. So in many enterprises, policies are controlled through policy manual. Second, we have control over organization. Control over organizations are accomplished through the development of organization's chart and organization's manual. Third, we have control over personal. So the statement that management is getting the work done through people underlines sufficiently the importance of control of personal. Fourth, we have control over wages and salaries. Such type of control is done by having programmers of job evolution and wage and salary analysis. So this work is done either by personal department or industrial engineering department. Fifth, control over cost. So cost control exercised by cost accountant by setting cost standard for material, labor and overheads and making comparison of actual cost data with standard cost. Sixth, we have control over methods. Control over methods is accomplished by conducting periodical analysis of activities of each department. So the functions performed, method adopted, and time devoted every employee is studied with a view to eliminating non-essential motions, functions, and methods. Seventh, we have control over capital expenditures. So it is exercised through a system or evolution of projects ranking of projects in terms of their ranking power and appropriating capital to various projects. Eight, we have control over production. So control over production is affected through studies about market needs, attitude of customer, and revision in products. We have control over research and development. So such activities are highly technical in nature, so no direct control is possible over them. Then we have control over external relations. So public relations department is responsible for controlling the external relations of the enterprise. So it may be prescribed certain measures for other operating departments which are instrumental in improving. And lastly, overall control. So it is affected that through budgetary control, master plan is prepared for overall control and all departments are made to involve themselves in this procedure. So for effective control through master plan, active support of top management is essential. And let's proceed to process of controlling. There are four steps involved in managerial control system. First, we have establishment of standards. So standards are the plans or the targets which have to be achieved in the course of business function. So they can also be called as the criterions for judging the performance. Standards generally are classified into two, which are measurable or tangible, which means those standards which can be measured and expressed are called as measurable standards. They can be in the form of cost, output, expenditure, time, and profit. Second standard is non-measurable or intangible. So there are standards which cannot be measured monetarily. For example, performance of a manager deviation of workers, their attitude towards a concern. So these are called intangible standards. 
second managerial control system is measurement of performance. So the second major step in controlling is to measure the performance. Finding out deviation becomes easy through measuring the actual performance. So performance level are something easy to measure and sometimes difficult. Measurement of tangible standards is easy as it can be expressed in units, cost, money terms, and etc. But quantitative measurement becomes difficult when performance of manager has to be measured. So performance of a manager cannot be measured in quantities. It can be measured only by attitude of workers, their morale to work, the development in the attitude regarding the physical environment, and their communication with the superiors. Third, we have comparison of actual and standard performance. So comparison of actual performance with the planned targets is very important. Deviation can be defined as the gap between actual performance and the planned targets. So the manager has to find out two things here, extent of deviation and cost of deviation. So extent of deviation means that the manager has to find out whether the deviation is positive or negative, or whether the actual performance is in conformity with the planned performance. So the manager has to exercise control by exception. He has to find out those deviations which are critical and important for business. So major deviations like replacement of machinery, appointment of worker, quality of raw material, rate of profit, and etc. should be looked up concisely. Therefore, it is said, if a manager controls everything, he ended up controlling nothing. On the other hand, if monthly production decreases continuously, it is called as major deviation. So once a deviation is identified, a manager has to think about various costs which has to lead to deviation. Now the costs can be erroneous planning, coordination loosens, implementations of plan is defective, and supervision and communication is ineffective. Now lastly, that's taking remedial actions. So once the cost and extent of deviations are known, the manager has to detect those errors and take remedial measurements for it. Let's move forward to the link between planning and controlling. So planning and controlling are two separate functions of management, yet they are closely related. The scope of activities, if both are overlapping to each other, without the basis of planning, controlling activities becomes baseless, and without controlling, planning becomes a meaningless exercise. According to Billy Getz, relationship between the two can be summarized in the following points. First, we have planning procedures controlling succeeds planning. Second, we have planning and controlling are inseparable function of management. And third, we have activities are put on rails by planning and they are kept at right place through controlling. And fourth, the process of planning and controlling works on system approach, which is as follows. Planning to results to corrective actions. And fifth, we have planning and controlling are integral part of an organization as both are important for smooth running of an enterprise. And lastly, Planning and controlling reinforce each other and each drives the other function of management. And that's it for lesson three. See you guys in lesson four. Stay safe and healthy. Goodbye.